Hello, Mr. Vasilenko. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, let me start from asking you about uh, this year and the meaning for this, of this year for foreign policy of Kazakhstan. We've seen a, a, a numerous events that was hosted by Kazakhstan with participation of uh, our international partners, of uh, leaders of foreign states. And uh, if to look back to all that activities, back to this year, uh, can we say that relations of Kazakhstan with its international partners um, have been activated and what are the reasons behind it? Good evening, Anur, and thank you very much for having me and uh, thank you for posing such a pertinent question. Indeed, over the past year, uh, Kazakhstan's foreign policy, one can say, went into an overdrive and um, uh, the relations with many partners around the world have been uh, strengthened, have been improved and have been developed. And this has to do with the activities of our president, first and foremost, Kasim Jamart Tokayev, but also, of course, uh, with, with the activities of the foreign ministry and other line ministries, as well as the entire government. Um, the reason for this um, very active foreign policy lies in the fact that uh, after 30 years of uh, independent development, Kazakhstan, um, as many countries, of the world uh, finds itself in a very peculiar situation where we need to continue to pursue what has come to be known the multi-vector foreign policy in a very different set of uh, geopolitical environments. It is no secret that the uh, world has seen a tremendous uh, upheavals over the past uh, uh, couple of years the international security system, uh, the international system generally, is uh, facing major, major challenges. And uh, it is um, up to countries like Kazakhstan, uh, middle powers, countries that are active, countries that are uh, having um, positive, uh, constructive, balanced relations with all uh, neighbors near and far, to, in, in fact, contribute to the uh, restoration of uh, dialogue at the global level. And it, it is exactly this that our president has focused over the past year by launching initiatives such as the Astana International Forum, which brought together leaders from around the world, thought uh, opinion leaders, uh, business leaders and political leaders to discuss ways on, uh, of how to restart global dialogue. Speaking of um, um, just uh, some numbers, um, I would say that our president welcomed here uh, 15 international leaders uh, from countries uh, ranging from Azerbaijan to the Czech Republic to Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, many others. And instead he visited eight countries uh, ranging from the United States, Germany and to Vietnam. Uh, I'm not going to recount all the visits at the levels of the ministers, etc., etc. The bottom line is that um, uh, the foreign policy uh, of Kazakhstan, which, by the way, also includes responsibility for attracting investment, has been very active this year. We have been able to ensure uh, uh, proper, beneficial, external uh, environment for the development of our country in, again, very challenging international environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that uh, Kazakhstan's economy is now set to grow almost 5% this year, the fact that last year Kazakhstan attracted uh, $28 billion in foreign direct investment, and this year we are on par with, uh, with last year's figures, all of these facts, they um, speak volumes about the efficiency of this peaceful, constructive, balanced, multi-vector foreign policy that our president has uh, pursued mm -hmm. and that we have been implementing as a foreign ministry. And you also mentioned very interesting in the idea that Kazakhstan, we can name Kazakhstan today a middle power and that is also a very good contribution in, into our international policy as well. Mm -hmm. And if you talk particularly about cooperation of Kazakhstan uh, with the European Union, uh, one of our um, major let's say, trade and economic partners. Uh, we also have seen, again, so-called activation of interest from the European side to Kazakhstan. It started, uh, for example, in late 2022, when, when we had meetings with um, the high-level uh, representatives of the EU, like Charles Michel, Jose Borrell, 
also the meeting in digital format with, with Ursula von der Leyen. And uh, Kazakhstan uh, continued this year to actively engage with the European partners. Uh, but my question is, what is strategic focus of our country in partnership with the European Union? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, the relations with the European Union and other European countries, such as the United Kingdom, which is no longer part of the European Union, have been developing, of course, over the 30 years of our independence. And uh, what you are seeing happening now in terms of this uh, uh, major proliferation of political contacts and uh, summitry and meetings and visits, etc., of course, this is not happening uh, um, um, on the basis of nothing. It's not like this is we're taking it out of thin air. There is a solid basis which has been established in the first 30 years of our uh, relations with the European Union, which we, by the way, um, commemorated earlier this year, the 30th anniversary of our diplomatic relations. Kazakhstan has been a privileged partner for the European Union in Central Asia. We're the only country which has signed and ratified what is known as the Enhanced Partnership and Cooperation Agreement with the European Union. It covers 29 areas of cooperation and it's a very wide ranging document. It's a huge document. I remember how we negotiated it, how we then proceeded through the ratification of this document. It covers, as I said, 29 areas, but it mostly has to do with establishing uh, frameworks for trade with the European Union. But, um, again, in this very complex geopolitical environment, against the backdrop of the uh, upheaval, even in our own neighborhood and the conflict in Ukraine, um, Kazakhstan um, has uh, taken a, a very clear position, and our president has made it very clear that Kazakhstan stands for the need, for the respect for the United Nations Charter, its fundamental principles of the uh, territorial integrity and uh, respect for sovereignty, and uh, that Kazakhstan stands for the peaceful resolution of conflicts, uh, peaceful diplomatic resolution of conflicts. And it is this position uh, that the president of Kazakhstan has taken that um, has uh, uh, conditioned the uh, strong interest on behalf of the European Union to have even stronger, even closer uh, ties with Kazakhstan. Yes, uh, we have been traditional partners in, uh, say, oil and gas industry. Right. And uh, Kazakhstan has been supplying oil and gas, uh, mostly oil, to the European Union. We supply 9% of uh, Europe's needs. Kazakhstan has also been, in recent years, um, a key supplier of uranium to the European Union, and especially to France, for example. But um, in recent years, as um, the European Union is engaged in the so-called double transition, green transition and digital transition, um, greater focus has been uh, paid to new areas of our cooperation. What I mean is that um, there are three specific areas which are at the forefront of our discussions and our cooperation with the European leaders, be it in Brussels or the European leaders of individual European countries such as President Macron of France or mm -hmm. Steinmeier of Germany. Uh, what I mean is that uh, first and foremost, uh, we are talking about uh, a big potential for cooperation in rare earth metals. Uh, Kazakhstan already produces 18 out of um, uh, 34 rare earth metals that the European Union identifies as critical raw materials. And uh, there is a big, big potential for expanding this cooperation. And there are specific examples of uh, the successful launch of cooperation, such as uh, a German company, HMS Bergbau, for example, acquiring several licenses to develop lithium in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So uh, rare earth metals is, is the future uh, of our cooperation. It's the future of mankind uh, for, the, for the next 15, 20 years, perhaps. And uh, all those um, uh, new technologies, they require a lot of uh, rare earth metals, mm -hmm. such as lithium, cobalt, and others. And Kazakhstan is rich in all of them. So that's one area. The second area is um, green energy, and in particular, green hydrogen. And uh, this is where the EU and Kazakhstan are quite keen to cooperate as well. And there, too, 
There are specific examples such as a project, a huge project that is being developed now by um, German company Swewind to produce up to 3 million tons of uh, green hydrogen beginning in 2032, which is one-fifth of the European Union's uh, needs in, mm -hmm. in this critical material. So uh, this project is now on track, it's been developed, it's been implemented, it's been, it has been formally launched when uh, German federal president uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier visited uh, Astana and then Aktau, where this project is located. And the third area of cooperation is, of course, transport and logistics. Kazakhstan is a, a country that is uh, uh, strategically located in the heart of uh, uh, Eurasia. And our president has uh, rightly, uh, on many occasions, identified this as a unique uh, advantage for Kazakhstan to become a, a hub uh, in the heart of Eurasia uh, by facilitating um, east-west and north-south trade. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the European Union is concerned, of course, um, the route that is of great interest to the European Union is the east-west connection between China and Europe via Kazakhstan, via the Caspian Sea, via South Caucasus. We're talking about middle corridor, uh, yes, right? exactly. We're talking about the middle corridor and that's uh, the focus of our discussion, the focus of our efforts and that's uh, going to be the buzzword of the next uh, decade at least, I believe. Um, it is uh, important to note that the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, as well as other uh, development banks and international financial institutions, conducted studies of the most sustainable options or the most promising options to develop connectivity between um, Central Asia and Europe and identified uh, the route uh, traversing through southern Kazakhstan as the most sustainable option. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, next month, uh, at the end of uh, January in Brussels, there will be a, um, an investors forum where European political leaders, European business uh, captains um, and political leaders and uh, companies from Central Asia, as well as the international financial institutions will converge to uh, uh, chart the way forward in our cooperation on how uh, we will be developing this middle corridor in the future, mm -hmm. where the European Union and its financial uh, resources could be applied uh, to develop uh, infrastructure, be it in Kazakhstan or in other countries in Central Asia or in the countries of South Caucasus, mm -hmm. so that we remove uh, these uh, so-called bottlenecks uh, that exist along this route so that we reach the target of uh, 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 achieving the uh, growth of uh, transportation along this route uh, by several times uh, by 2030. So the interest uh, is purely economic as I understand because we are talking about economic, we are, we are talking about activating trade through transport and logistics and also about investments, right? So I think Kazakhstan is anticipating investment uh, to be attracted in our country and in this region. Can we, um, can we have some numbers, volumes of investment? Yes, we anticipate yes. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that. The interest it is indeed economic, but uh, again, I need to underscore that uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom of this uh, booming relations with the European Union and other European countries, uh, lies the understanding um, by the European leaders of the importance of Kazakhstan and countries of Central Asia for Europe's future in all these areas which I uh, mentioned, but also the understanding of the uh, importance to have uh, stronger ties with Kazakhstan uh, in this um, uh, very dynamic geopolitical environment. We uh, uh, famously, as I said, pursue the multi-vector foreign policy, which is uh, about having good relations with Russia, about having good relations with China, but also about having good relations with the West. Not to mention, of course, our uh, brotherly nations and, and countries in Central Asia. So, as I said, uh, this economic uh, development is rooted in a very strong uh, political understanding of um, the commonality of our interests. 
So that's that. Uh, in terms of investments, the EU is the largest investor in Kazakhstan. It accounts for about 30% um, um, uh, of all foreign direct investment invested in Kazakhstan. Uh, since independence, according to our numbers, that's about 170 billion US dollars in foreign direct investment. The European Union is also our largest uh, trading partner and um, accounting also for about 30% of our foreign uh, trade, taken as a block of 27 nations. And um, we see a great potential for the expansion of uh, both investments from the EU and trade with the EU. And I mentioned already the traditional areas such as oil and gas and uranium and metals, right. but also new areas such as, for example, uh, not just these rare earth metals which I mentioned, but also agricultural products which we are working with the EU to get access uh, for to the European market. And already Kazakhstan's fish, uh, you know, uh, freshwater fish, uh, is being sold in Europe in, in big volumes. Mm, right, so we, we are looking for diversification yes. of our trade, um, uh, trade routes. Let me ask also about the, uh, you also mentioned uh, the uranium export, the raw uh, earth uh, metals. So um, earlier, recently, there was, um, there, th there was a first ever visit of French leader Emmanuel Macron to our country and uh, media and experts, they concentrated their attention on the uranium exports, on the nuclear energy uh, development in our country. But what other aspects? Um, are there in our partnership with, for example, with France, mm -hmm. uh, maybe political, cultural, humanitarian ties? Mm -hmm. Well, it was the first ever visit for President Macron, but it wasn't the first ever visit by a French president because previously, yeah, of right. course, uh, uh, Kazakhstan was visited by President uh, Mitterrand, uh, President uh, uh, um, Sarkozy, and then President Hollande. So this is the fourth presidential visit uh, to Kazakhstan by the President of France. And it was important, uh, it's important to know that this was a reciprocal visit uh, following our president's visit to Paris, which he paid immediately after his inauguration a year ago. So it was a, a very symbolic um, uh, visit uh, to, to France, which is one of our key trade and economic partners and uh, key investors. Uh, there are about uh, uh, 170 French uh, companies working in Kazakhstan and of course they uh, cover not just energy and Total uh, being uh, the most uh, famous uh, among them but there are many others uh, such as Air Liquide or Danone, or Lactalis, uh, 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 Saint-Gobain, etc. Et what I'd like to say is that uh, this visit of course uh, uh, was helpful in opening new avenues for cooperation. And uh, one uh, such area of cooperation is uh, the renewables mm -hmm. and, and the renewable energy sources. And it is important that uh, during the visit, uh, uh, important agreements were reached on how we will implement jointly a project uh, to build a wind farm in um, in the south of Kazakhstan, in the Jambil region, uh, near the village of Mirny, uh, where uh, this wind farm will be, with the capacity of 1.2 gigawatt, it's a huge amount, uh, will be built uh, jointly with Total Ren and Kazmonai Gas and Samru Kazina. So uh, that's uh, another interesting avenue of cooperation, moving this cooperation beyond oil and gas. So we will be producing green energy together. Of course, there were other agreements, such as an agreement to develop a network of French language schools in Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. and, and an I was about yes, and an culture. yes, exactly, and an agreement to uh, establish um, a French, uh, a Kazakhstan French university. Uh, well, for nine years now, uh, there has been Institut Sorbonne in uh, Almaty. Uh, both sides now want to sort of strengthen this uh, cooperation in higher education and establish a Kazakh-French university. Um, of course, uh, there has been uh, uh, a lot of discussion about the uranium. Of course, Kazakhstan is already the uh, largest uh, supplier of uranium to uh, 
uh, France, of natural uranium to France. And of course, um, uh, there can be uh, further opportunities for expanding this cooperation. Also, as is known, Kazakhstan is uh, deliberating over the issue of the building of a nuclear power plant in our country. And as our president said, that uh, decision on whether or not to build a nuclear power plant will be made by the people of Kazakhstan in a referendum uh, whose time and term uh, have not been announced yet by, by the president. But if uh, the people of Kazakhstan decide to build uh, a nuclear power, uh, for decide that a nuclear power plant is to be built in Kazakhstan, uh, we would be interested in learning from the experience of uh, countries which have developed mm -hmm. uh, nuclear, uh, peaceful nuclear industry, That's and France, nice France, France being one of them. In France, more than 60 percent of electricity comes from nuclear power plants. Right, and the same question uh, I wanted to ask about uh, specifically Kazakh and German relations. We also had uh, high-level meetings uh, this year with a uh, visit of uh, federal president of Germany, Frank Walter Steinmeier, to our country, and then the visit of Kazakh president Kasim Jumar Tokayev to Germany. So uh, this uh, nature, this high-level nature of uh, visits, I think, is very important in this context. So how do we see the future of our partnership? Well, our president, uh, Kasim Jumar Tokayev, has identified identified uh, cooperation with Germany uh, as one of the top global priorities for him personally when he assumed office in 2019. And uh, one might recall that in December 2019 it was Germany that uh, he visited as the first European country as president. And uh, this year has seen indeed a very dynamic uh, development of cooperation with Germany. Not only did the federal president, uh, uh, Mr. Frank Walter Steinmeier, visit Kazakhstan in June, but also our president visited Berlin uh, with a bilateral visit uh, for meetings with uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz and, uh, vice and uh, federal president uh, Steinmeier, but also to attend the first ever Central Asia-Germany uh, summit uh, with Olaf Scholz. Uh, what I'd like to say is that uh, Germany, of course, is of great interest to Kazakhstan as a country th that is uh, known for its high technological prowess, uh, high uh, level of technological development. Uh, we have uh, with Germany, of course, a huge number of documents signed uh, covering a wide area uh, of cooperation. But I'd like to highlight one of them, and that's the, um, an agreement on cooperation um, uh, regarding the um, uh, exploration of mineral resources in Kazakhstan, which is known uh, informally as um, resources in exchange for technologies. And uh, right now, again, uh, we are developing this uh, cooperation. I mentioned uh, German company HMS Bergbau, which will de <coughs> be developing lithium fields in, in Kazakhstan, but uh, much more to come. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Germany has also been helpful to Kazakhstan in developing uh, what is known as a dual system of education. And um, again, with Germany, there are plans to also develop German language education in Kazakhstan. Um, uh, I think that uh, in the next few years, we will see much, much stronger ties with Germany. Um, Germany is uh, a, a solid uh, uh, trade partner for Kazakhstan accounting for about f uh, $5 billion in, in bilateral trade, according to mm -hmm. German statistics. Last year, Germany uh, invested about $500 million in Kazakhstan. But these numbers are certainly set to grow as we... And they are growing. They are growing, yes, yes thank you. And um, they are set to grow even further as we uh, provide uh, this major political boost by both our leaders. You mentioned several times the geopolitical context and I'm interested in your view of uh, do you think this geopolitical context will pose more opportunities or challenges to Kazakhstan in upcoming future? Well both frankly speaking uh, but Kazakhstan I, I think um, in the 32 years now of its independence uh, has um, uh, proven uh, true to its multi-vector foreign policy, 
we do not have bad relations or tense relations with any country in the world. And I think um, probably there are other countries like this, uh, probably in our neighborhood there are other countries like this, but, um, and elsewhere in the world, but I think this is significant and this shows that uh, this uh, foreign policy, this openness to the world, this uh, desire to uh, resolve issues uh, through dialogue, uh, they, they will be in demand, but they also have already contributed to the fact that Kazakhstan is in such a position to, to play a constructive role in, in, in global politics. It's no coincidence that Kazakhstan, for example, uh, launched and now chairs the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, which is a fledgling uh, security forum uh, bringing together 28 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, but also one might recall Kazakhstan's successful chairmanship in the OECE, uh, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe in 2010 and hosting of the Astana Summit uh, which resulted in the adoption of the Astana Declaration which is a major, major political doc document in within the OECE which is still being referred to w within the OECE. And there are many other examples such as the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions. So all of these initiatives including uh, the Astana International Forum, they uh, show Kazakhstan's keen desire to engage with the world, to contribute to the resolution of uh, global problems as much as we can. And we will continue on promoting those values of multilateral, multilateral. <coughs> There's no policy. other choice. There's no other choice for Kazakhstan. And uh, let me finish with uh, asking you the question, I think, um, Kazakh citizens will yes. be interested in particular about the visa and the mm -hmm. future of any future um, easing prospects for gaining the EU visas for Kazakhstan. Is it, mm -hmm. is it on the table now for discussing yes. with our uh, partners? Yes, um, um, this uh, agreement which I mentioned earlier, the Enhanced Partnership and Cooperation Agreement, envisages that uh, the European Union and Kazakhstan launch uh, negotiations over visa facilitation, uh, me which means that uh, uh, we will uh, conduct these uh, negotiations with the European Union over the easing, as you said, of requirements for Kazakh citizens to get uh, European uh, Schengen visas. Um, I should mention that, of course, Kazakhstan uh, has uh, uh, abolished the uh, visa regime and introduced a visa-free uh, mm -hmm. uh, regime for the citizens of all European Union uh, member states back in 2017. Right now we are asking our European uh, partners to facilitate, not to cancel visa regime for Kazakhstan, uh, but to uh, facilitate the issuance of visas uh, for our citizens. And I'm glad to say that uh, earlier this year in a meeting between uh, um, our Foreign Minister Murat Nurtleu and uh, Commissioner Ilva Johansson, a uh, member of the European Commission for Home Affairs, uh, an agreement was reached that uh, we will launch such uh, formal talks on visa facilitation. I'm glad to say even further that these formal talks have now been launched. Mm -hmm. We are now in the process of uh, consultations with the European Union and member states, we expect that uh, in a not too distant future, I can't put a more definitive, definitive time frame, mm -hmm. but the, this uh, process will be uh, easier for Kazakh citizens, um, at least in the way that uh, uh, the collection of documents for visas uh, is concerned. And so we're the talking about less bureaucracy in this process. Yes, we, that's, what, that's what we're talking about, less bureaucracy, perhaps less paperwork, um, but this, uh, we both understand that this is just the first step mm -hmm. because uh, the uh, sort of the proper visa facilitation to which we are both aspiring means that uh, eventually we will sign a visa facilitation agreement with the European Union, which traditionally goes along with the agreement on readmission, meaning that Kazakhstan is uh, thus committing itself to take back those citizens that illegally are found to be uh, on the territory of the European Union. Um, and it is this um, for formal visa facilitation agreement that uh, we are uh, aiming towards. 
that will provide uh, cheaper visas, longer term uh, visas, and shorter uh, time for the review of uh, mm -hmm. visa applications. So we are working on that. Um, we are glad that our European partners uh, reciprocate and they work with us. And uh, we hope that at some point in the not too distant future, we will be able to share some good news with our citizens. Thank you very much. I think this is a very good uh, note to, uh, to recap and finish our interview. Thank you again for your time and for your presence in our program. Thank you, Ainur.